As the Austrian natural scientist Johann Natterer caught the first discus, presumably around 1830, in the region of the Rio Negro in South America, and Johann Jakob Heckel described it as Symphysodon discus for the scientific world in 1840, they had no idea what an unusual fish they had bestowed upon Aquaria sciences. Rudolf Knerr, likewise an Austrian scientist, published nearly 30 years later the first illustration of the Symphysodon discus Heckel 1840. But it took nearly another seven decades until the fever for this fish erupted. While at that time other discus species or subspecies were already known, in the middle of the 20th century people still occupied themselves with the problems of the care and reproduction of this fish. While in the 60s it was believed that all of the colour varieties of these fish were already known, in recent times new varieties are being introduced, some with remarkable appearances. The typical colours of fish caught in the wild are still the number one favourite of many discus lovers. Newly discovered color variations such as the reds native to the area of the Rio Ica, a river in the border region between Colombia and Brazil, or the impressive looking variation of the Symphysodon echifaciatus axelrodi from the region around the city of Alencoer in northeastern Brazil, have, aside from the very rare color varieties already mentioned, a remarkably high priority for many discus lovers today. What the colour varieties of fish caught in the wild are to a smaller part of the discus fans are the bread colour varieties for many other enthusiastic aquarists and breeders. What began as an experiment in crossbreeding in the 60s has become almost an everyday occurrence in the present time. In recent years, many responsible breeders have not only been concerned with the form but also with the colour, and blue was at the centre of attention. But while in the last few years the systematic breeding of the discus in Europe just seemed to chug along, in Asia it went full steam ahead. Remarkable news about the extraordinary successes by Asian breeders reached the discus loves in Europe only sporadically. While the unusual new colours and the interesting forms from the Asian breeders had already started their successful march of triumph in the land of the rising sun and in the new world, the European discus lovers watched this development very skeptically, as they have often done in the past. Why is this? Is it because of the lack of information, or is Europe too conservative? Asia is apparently the leading and possibly guiding force in the breeding of the discus at this time. The discus farms in Asia are forecasting a successful path into the future for the discus. In the last few decades, centers of discus breeding have appeared in Asia, which include Singapore, Penang, Bangkok, and Hong Kong, and of late, also Taiwan. To elucidate this trend, discus farms in Southeast Asia will be introduced in this film, whereby Hong Kong is the most easterly example of this enumeration. Hong Kong, the gateway to China, lies on the southeastern coast of mainland China in a transitional zone from subtropical to tropical climate. Hong Kong is a dream destination for many tourists and is without doubt one of the most beautiful, interesting and remarkable places in the world. Hong Kong, it is the hub of trade in Asia as well as the centre of the pulsating world of finance. 
Aside from the many small islands, Hong Kong is made up of Victoria and Aberdeen, which lie on the island of Hong Kong, and also Kowloon and the New Territories. Hong Kong, it is old traditions and a look into the future. In Victoria, this future has already begun. Hong Kong has already made the step into the 21st century long before many other cities in the world. Hong Kong, it is also a superlative touristic attraction. Once known as the last western city in the east, today Hong Kong is a signpost to the next century. The teeming life between the modern skyscrapers and the chaotic traffic is one of a kind. The atmosphere of the megacities Victoria and Kowloon and the view from Victoria Peak, the highest elevation on the island, down onto the sea of skyscrapers in Victoria, the heart of Hong Kong, are incomparable. As early as the 1950s, Hong Kong had made a name for itself in the field of aquaristics. Then, as now, the small neons are bred on a large scale on the mainland outside of Kowloon in the New Territories. Some of these breeding facilities have as many as 1,000 aquariums. The groundwater here has proven to be good breeding water. The breeders pump the necessary amounts from local wells. The water is very soft and slightly acidic, with a pH value of around 6. Successful breeders produce in accordingly sized facilities up to 1 million neons per year. 40,000 per month is considered to be a bad result. Because Hong Kong lies climatically on the border of the tropics, the temperatures often rise dramatically in the summer months. In comparison to other aquarium fish, neons can only reproduce at lower water temperatures, so that a successful breeding operation is only possible in the cooler months of the year, between October and May. Therefore, in the warmer summer months, a break in activity is inevitable. Today, Hong Kong not only stands for neons, aquaristically speaking, but also for the discus. In Aberdeen, in the southeastern part of the island, the 18th floor of the Tin Wan Close Building No. 9 is home to one of the most well-known discus breeding facilities in the world that has made Hong Kong known to the circle of discus lovers well beyond the borders of Asia. Worldwide Fish Farm is also one of the largest fish farms in Hong Kong. For many years now, a multitude of discus fish that are highly recognized the world over have been bred in approximately 500 aquariums. The breeding and holding aquariums that function successfully because of very well devised technical aids stand in very cramped quarters. The multitude of the different forms and colors of the discus fish at Worldwide Fish Farm is remarkable. Varieties such as the high-body cobalt, blue diamond, high-body red, and giant red are being propagated worldwide. But here, as well, the color red is steadily taking the place of blue because of the rise in demand. The spacious and very clean nursery and breeding aquariums that are fitted with plastic tubes as spawning substratum, as opposed to clay pottery that is customarily used elsewhere in the world, usually have a photograph placed on the back of the tank, which makes them very decorative. In spite of all the activity, great store is set on an attractive overall impression, and also possibly gives the fish a feeling of security. Nearly 200 breeding pairs are constantly used for breeding. 400 extra breeding pairs make up the reserve. Also in this case, the soft and neutral tap water is usually used for breeding. We are very satisfied with a degree of hardness between 3 and 4 and a pH level of 7, and we are able to work successfully with it, said those responsible at Worldwide Fish Farm. And the quality of the discus fish they breed underlines this statement. 
the quality of the forms and colors is very high. It is proof of the skill of Chinese breeders. But it is not the neon or the discus, but rather the goldfish that is inseparably connected with China. Since more than 1,000 years, they are the number one favorite of the Chinese. Since nearly 500 years, they are part of the national heritage of the Chinese people. Even today, the aquarium shops along Fish Road in Kowloon offer a very large selection of goldfish in a wide variety of breeding forms. On the average, every fifth Chinese family in Hong Kong has an aquarium and is often filled with goldfish. Goldfish and koi, which are both known as cold water fish, are among the most popular aquarium and pond fish. But more and more, the tropical ornamental fish native to Asia and South America are taking the aquariums of the Chinese by storm. For the visiting foreigner, the presentation of these fish is very unusual. Efficiently pre-packed plastic bags containing four to six fish are offered for sale. Clearly arranged on so-called sales displays, they allow a quick survey of the goods offered and enable a comprehensive judgment. While the store fronts of the shops are open to the street, this method of sales is not a problem, at least not in the summer months. Up until now, the range of the fish offered with 40 different species is still very modest, but it is possibly the beginning of a very quickly developing extensive aquaristics. There are approximately 600 mostly small fish and pet shops in Hong Kong that aside from goldfish, also offer tropical aquarium fish in ever increasing numbers, and that not only pre-packed in small numbers in plastic bags. The presentation of the kings of the Amazons, the discus fish, however, makes an impression of exclusivity and as if from another world. On a cramped space of 10 square meters, Victor Rocha displays a selection of his special breeding successes and other choice animals in an environment especially adapted to these majestic fish. The Rocha Discus Aquarium is an unusual place, and the terms sales room or fish shop do not apply in this case. It is rather a room that has been designed with a great deal of love and a wealth of imagination for the presentation of this extraordinary fish. The discus fish offered here are well developed and have beautiful colors. Only large animals are offered for sale. Here as well, blue breeding varieties prevail, but nevertheless, red is the color of the future. The alenquer, which is often falsely called alensa here in Hong Kong, is in especially great demand, along with other brown color varieties that are often very liberally considered as red. The large, clean, almost sparkling aquariums fill this discus boutique with its white, friendly decor adorned with flowers. In Victor Rocha's showroom, there are only discus fish on display in ten middle-sized aquariums that do not appear sterile or drab, despite the lack of gravel. Here, too, a photograph attached to the back of the tank and small decorative pieces make it very attractive. Because the night temperatures in Hong Kong can fall to around 10 degrees Celsius in the cold winter months, the aquariums must be heated. Little filter boxes equipped with an electric motor pump and mounted onto the aquarium provide for a good water quality, in addition to regular water changes, and therefore for clear, clean water. The exclusive Rocha's Discus Aquarium is most probably one of a kind, a boutique fit for a king. <laughs>